So, um, so welcome everyone to our session, um, which is being run by the Turing Way community. Um, we are doing a session on research infrastructure roles. Um, we're going to be talking about perspectives, pathways and lived experiences. So there's going to be quite a few different people talking today, but I'm going to start off by just having, doing an introduction to the session. So um, we're currently existing in an evolving research and data landscape where AI and data science and open research are now being integrated into all different sectors and domains. This gives us a different focuses and requires us to think differently about how we do research. And this landscape is, uh, is causing greater interdisciplinarity and we need to approach this type of research very differently. We are working often in teams that have many different experts and therefore diverse knowledge and skill sets. So it becomes more important to have people and roles that specialize in translation of research between domains and work as the glue to hold together research teams. Um, we also need to widen particip participation in research, so make more people involved in the research that we do and upskill people so they can be involved. And this requires experts in different areas of research to make this happen. There is now a greater commitment to equality, diversity, inclusion and accessibility within research, and this has many, many facets. And so how do we actually do this effectively? Again, it requires people with specialist knowledge in, for example, making resources accessible to all. And we are moving towards a better research culture where we value people and their skills, and hopefully moving away from narrowly focused research assessment criteria, both of which broadens the expertise needed within research teams. So out of this evolving research landscape has arisen research infrastructure roles that provide specialised skills, expertise and services, such as research software development or community management. And these expertise are required for effectively carrying out high quality research. Um, so being able to get the greatest quality and impact out of research. So therefore, the roles that researchers can take um, take on in projects and specialise in have diversified. And I've got here a picture of just many different roles, not, not an exhaustive list because there's probably many more and many more names. Um, so research teams themselves have diversified. And this is something that we're um, we're really involved in yeah, at the Turing and uh, in and leading on nationally, we feel, um, particularly in our tools, practices and systems program. And this is a cross cutting program led by our program director, Dr. Kirsty Whitaker. And the core values of this program are to embed best, best practices across the Turing research and teams, as well as deliver trustworthy systems, transparent reporting, inclusive, interoperable design, ethical integrity, respectful co-creation and leadership in open research. The Tools, Practices and System programme is an open infrastructure programme and brings strategic and technical support to enable stakeholder engagement and participation in research happening at the Turing. Um, we have several teams in the TPS programme, one being the Research Community Management Team led by Dr Malvika Sharan. Um, we work to enable communities of researchers and other contributors to research. We work within research projects as the bridge connecting different stakeholders to drive research forward. We also have a team of research application managers, and we've got Harry with us today. He's going to share his experience of that team. And they are like product managers in industry. They make sure our open source code, software, and other research infrastructures are available for reuse, and they, uh, and they promote these um, outputs beyond the Turing. And lastly, we have a team um, that brings participatory citizen science approaches into research projects. We also have other research infrastructure teams at the Turing, including our REG group, which are the research software engineering group, um, and then people who specialize in research ethics and also data wranglers. So as part of the Turing Way project, we're working to professionalize research infrastructure roles. And if you don't know, the Turing Way is an open source guide to reproducible, ethical, collaborative and inclusive data science. It's an online resource put together by researchers and experts. And for us, it's really four different things. It is the online book, which you can go and look at. It's a community where people come together to collaboratively write chapters, build and maintain resources, share their skills and ideas around best practices 
is in data science and research. Um, it's also somewhere where open source principles are applied in the development and maintenance of our project and our collaboration. Um, oh, sorry, and our collaboration really is the process that is the backbone of our process. And really our aim is to make collaborative, reusable and transparent research too easy not to do. So the Turing Way started as a book on reproducibility um, founded by Kirsty Whitaker and the Turing Way project started with contributors who documented best practices, guidance and recommendations in chapters which were describing various concepts and tools that can ensure the reproducibility aspects of data research. These chapters include topics such as open research, version control, data management, um, code testing and reviewing and much more. Um, however, um, these data practices were not enough um, as research uh, we know uh, needs to be communicated to others we need to design projects uh, to make them effective and we need to know how to collaborate with people so and we also need to integrate ethical um, ethical, ethical practices into all of our research so we very quickly expanded our book and our project in order to accommodate all of these different requirements. And so we have four other guides um, in addition to the reproducible research guide. So these are on project design, communication, collaboration and ethical research. But we also record all of our community practices um, that we're developing and practicing within the Turing Way in our community handbook so that it can be adopted by other open source communities. So um, our guide for collaboration, um, we cover lots of topics here, including things like getting started with GitHub and working communities. But one of our new chapters um, that I just want to highlight to you, and we are still developing this, so please do come to us with all your other research infrastructure roles so we can include them. So we've got this chapter that we're developing about research infrastructure roles, and it has sub chapters which give an overview of each of the roles, and then it also gives people's personal stories and case studies of them working in those roles. So we'd be really happy if you would come forward into one of our collaboration cafes and um, speak to us about your role and uh, especially case studies as well. I think we'd be really interested in that. So that's one way we're working to professionalize the roles. Um, the other way is that um, we've just started a project, a poly skills policy project um, with the skills team um, at the Turing, um, and this is about professionalizing traditional and infrastructure roles in data science. So this project really was um, thought of to aim, its aim is to fill a gap in our current knowledge around data science roles. Um, and this gap comes from the National Data Strategy, which was published in 2020. Um, and this strategy points out that there is no widely agreed definition for data skills and that the role descriptors for data science roles are used very inconsistently across different institutions. So the goals of our project is to really curate and centralise the definitions that are out there, the role descriptors and the skill lists uh, of these different roles. So both the traditional data science roles and also the more modern infrastructure roles. Um, and so this is something we'll be discussing today uh, in this workshop. Um, and we're also going to be, so in this project, we're going to be writing an article about our research community management team at the Turing. And then we're going to bring all these findings together and work with policy experts to bring these findings to policymakers in the form of a policy briefing note. Um, so if you want to find out more about this project, we are going to be later in the year having a, a, a workshop of national stakeholders. So we'd really like to see some of you at this workshop. Um, please do go and have a look at our GitHub repository or you can get in touch with me. Right, I think I'm handing over to Anne now. So Anne, do you want to do a bit of a check so we can hear you? Yes. So can people hear me online? I'm assuming that you all can hear me in the room. That's a bit better. Okay, cool. So we can try for now. So um, what we've kind of walked through, right, is a little bit more about the Turing, a little bit how we're thinking about research infrastructure roles, a little bit about how um, uh, some of our ongoing work can support that growth and I'm seeing some skeptical faces in the room, which may mean that the audio isn't working. So apologies in advance for anyone online. Um, but what we'll do next is then kind of walk through what in real time some people's experiences in research infrastructure looks like within the Turing. Then we'll kind of turn the mic over back to you all to, to lead a set of, of discussions um, within groups to really ask you all, you know, does this, um, does this title really 
Uh, is this something that you identify with? Do you consider yourself a part of research infrastructure? And we have a, a set of core questions that we'll ask you later. But before that happens, uh, I'm going to pass the mic to a couple of folks who will tell us a little bit more about their experiences uh, with research infrastructure. Um, Emma, if you could go into the next slide. Yeah. And I'll pass it off to Camilla to tell us a little bit about herself. Shall I stand? Or <laughs> can I can can people see me in the yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Emma and Anne. Uh that's for the okay. So yeah. So I'm a senior research data scientist working at the Turing since 2018. And I think my my background into like data science and research software engineering engineering is kind of very traditional. So I did a PhD in particle physics and then worked as a data scientist in the private sector for a couple of years before joining the Turing. And uh, I think we all know what research software engineering is, or most of us, that is kind of the topic of this conference. But I'm going to talk more about how in the Turing and within my team, which is a research engineering group, have tried to like expand these roles so we can fit a wider community of people. and. Uh, of projects as well that we work on. So we have three roles in the research engineering team. One is the research data science one, another the research software engineer, and then the research computing engineer, which is a role we introduced last year. It's quite new. And uh, I think between the research data science and research software engineer is kind of a spectrum. And sometimes we work in projects that are, need some more of this as uh, the data science skills, some more of the research software engineering skills. but I think particularly that like having this research data science role has allowed us to have a bit more diversity on the people that we hire, because not everyone identifies themselves as a research software engineer when they come out of their PhD, for example, maybe working in biology or things like that, or physics, like that, that was for me as well. So, so these kind of roles allow people to feel more comfortable in applying into the job and then realizing that there the, is kind of job they can do. And also, in the, in the icebreaker question, I think there was someone who said that, that they were a data chameleon. And I want to show you our mascot is uh, Reginald. And uh, that came out of thinking that we're a little bit like chameleons. We kind of adapt to projects depending on the skills they have. And we just pick them up and learn new things. And uh, so yeah. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, just to describe a little bit of the ways of working. So I think there are some ways. We, we started like in in, in, in just being able to be put in projects that were ongoing and that they needed like uh, some support in like packing extra code, improving the code and things like that. But we have, as we have grown as a team, we are like 45 people now in the team. We kind of wanted to uh, put a little bit more weight on how do we do projects? How do we, where, when do we start on the project? So we're trying to now start at the beginning of projects, uh, making sure that they, they understand that our resources are useful from the start and not just kind of like just a service, like we are actual collaborators on the research. And so we also help shape projects and we are now co i in, in, in some of the projects that we do. And if we go to the last slide, uh, the next one, sorry. yeah. So, so yeah, so, and, and also like the values of our team. Well, we, we, we have, as I said, 45 people who come from very different backgrounds and we have psychologists, we have historians, we have a lot of physicists, yeah, uh, we have, uh, people from everywhere. And so we really value that there is all this different way of thinking and, 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 and we know that this can contribute to projects differently. And uh, also I think while we're in the collaborations workshop and I think that's like the, my favorite part of the job is that we really are uh, uh, pointing into collaborating and not really competing with each other. And well, as I think we are all on board on that, that the impact of research is more than just writing papers. So that's kind of one of our goals. So that would be it for research engineering at the Turing. Now, then we'll pass the mic um, to Ale uh, online, who tell us a little bit more about being a research project manager. Thanks so much, Camilla. Um, we cannot hear you at the moment on our end. Is there a volume for the internal Zoom? Anything? No, we can't hear you online. I can't hear Alex either. No, I can't hear her either. No. 
I think might be output question. Hello, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For Sorry for that. Uh, okay, so my name is Alexandra Rauh Alvarez, and I've been working in research since 2021 in an arts research center that connects academics with artists and policy maker, makers doing research about mental health, climate change, and cultural heritage, mainly in the Global South. But I've recently joined the Turing Way and the Turing Institute, where I am the research project manager for the Turing Way and the Turing Way Practitioners Hub. You have already heard about the Turing Way, but the Turing Way Practitioners Hub is a forum for cross-sector engagement, knowledge exchange, and strategic collaboration with organizations across different sectors. The participating organizations will join efforts in building a shared understanding of open science, reproducibility, accessibility, and research ethics, promoting quality, rigor, and integrity in the UK's data science and AI research. Part of my roles actually include coordinate meetings with partners, team members, and be a source of information, making sure that all different stakeholders, um, all different stakeholders are updated on the research status. Um, I also, together with the PI, agree on the governance of the project and the reports that should be produced, uh, all the communication channels and ways of encouraging harmony within the different team members. Uh, I support also the researchers with their research ethics forms and the data protection plans. I also update them whenever that's necessary and identify risk and escalate them accordingly. Um, I try to control the budget, quote, hire and follow the delivery of suppliers, which can be illustrators, science writers, caterings, uh, and comply within the Turing policies. I also issue or follow contract agreements and make sure that everything is done in the most proper way. So that's that's mainly me. And uh, I'll be here if you have any other question. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Great, thank you so much uh, for sharing a little bit more about your experience as a research project manager. I think really to um, next we'll be passing the mic over to Hari, who will tell us a bit more about what it means to be what we call a research application manager, a role that was um, incubated at the Turing most recently. Is being incubated at the Turing. <laughs> um, hi everyone, I'm Hari. Like when you go somewhere quickly, you're in a hurry. I'm not sure if I'm um, screen. I that right. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a research application manager. I should actually, you'll see on the next slide, should say Ramos now, because we also have re research application officers, not Rams, Ramos. That's an emergent title as well. Um, and so, yeah, we were incubated, are being incubated at the Turing. It was a new role. Um, and part of like the hiring process was, we have this rough idea of what we're focusing on, which is enhancing the real world impact of research outputs. Um, well, just take that first bit, enhancing the real world impact of research outputs. And a lot of the questions I was asking in my interview, like, oh, so do you think it's kind of like focusing on this stuff? I was like, yeah, I don't know, it's part, part of the role is to <laughs> find out whether that's the right thing to focus on or not. Um, and it's been a very exploratory sort of emergent year trying to understand like what this question means. A lot of it is like these kind of statements are changing quite a lot as we discover what works and what doesn't. A lot of it is identifying stakeholders, um, both internally and externally, um, to make sure we're like not only knowledge sharing and like collaborating where we can, not duplicating work from our research, but also identifying if you're in the workshop yesterday, like who the users are, where they are, how they work, what kind of use they're going to see from the research, um, and also adapting outputs for real world use. So making sure that code bases are open, that they're well documented, that we're sort of engaging the people who are going to be interacting with them and finding out what's the best way for you to do that and how can we bring you on board um, both in a co-creative capacity within the research project itself, and then set them up so that when the research project ends, we're seeing some kind of longevity to it as well. If you can go to the next slide. Um, and there's, again, like, we're, we're figuring this out as we go. And if you were in the sustainability workshop yesterday, um, you'll be aware that some of these definitions are still being figured out. Um, but a lot of the things we're realizing from the work we're doing and the benefits that we're seeing um, sort of circulate around these broad four themes um, of Accelerating adoption of research outputs. So again, not just having conversations about conceptually, is this useful, but also like how can we make sure that the outputs of what we're doing are adopted? Um, again, maybe within internal teams, but also externally as well. Um, enhancing these pathways to innovation. So making sure that we're focusing on like what needs to be focused on in research projects to see that new knowledge actually have impact in the world um, and not spending too much time on questions that won't let us go anywhere. 
Um, a big one is this sort of stakeholder identification piece. So making sure that um, in the areas we're working, where we have a representative group of stakeholders that are as diverse and broad um, as they should be to make sure any of the solutions we're building can be applied in as many different places as possible. Um, and it's kind of boosting the efficiency of the ecosystem, <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit buzzwordy, um, but it's kind of focused on, are we actually seeing pathways to impact that sort of critical pathways and critical paths to impact um, and identifying what those are to shape what sort of research questions we ask and what we prioritize. I think one big piece of what we're realizing at the moment is that, so at the moment we're kind of all practitioners and we've come, we've called ourselves product managers, then, but adapted to the research world. We've come from um, a lot of backgrounds, especially like industry and startup backgrounds and have kind of seen we're sort of on the ground embedded in research projects to trying to answer these questions for those research projects. What we're realizing as we go is that there are research questions or sort of like conceptual questions to ask this sort of like maybe papers we can write reports we can write about how we're going about this what we're learning from best practice all that kind of thing and um, i think there's we're seeing there's two sides of the ram roll one is actually practicing this stuff and figuring out what works and one is trying to sort of provide best guidance practice all that kind of stuff in this work as well um, and yeah with the introduction of officers we're also seeing like different levels of how how much you can deliver within this space um, so please come talk to me and around for the rest of the conference if you have any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Harriet. Um, and then finally, to round us off uh, to talk about research community management, um, I'll pass the mic back to Emma. Thanks a lot, Anne. Um, so yeah, so I work at, uh, at the Turing as a senior research community manager. Um, my background is I'm a researcher. I, I have a PhD in archaeology. I specialize in botany. Um, and my my other real interest mm. is in and expertise is in open research and community building, which is why I'm a community manager. Mm. Um, and I came to the Turing a couple of years ago um, as a research community manager on one project, which was called the DeCOVID project. Mm. And that was a COVID-19 research mm. project looking at um, patient data from hospitals. Um, mm. And now um, I have been promoted because we have a we're creating this pathway for a uh, career pathway for community managers so I'm now a senior community manager mm -hmm. and I actually work across multiple projects I work with the senior leadership in the whole health program so um, you're probably thinking what do we do so I've put in pink here these are kind of the goals of our team of mm -hmm. community uh, research community managers at the Turing and then in white I've put here mm -hmm. the kind of things that we do to make this kind of happen so it's not an exhaustive list because we do many many things um, but just to go through them so we we one of our main goals really is to embed open research practices into the projects and programs that we work with um, and things that we would um, advise on or help with is reproducible workflows and also things like inclusive practice so making sure that the events that are run the projects themselves really think about inclusivity and that is really embedded within projects um, we also want everyone in the project to have a shared understanding so we want to make um, things very explicit about different uh, goals of the project the roadmap, the processes that happen with the project. So our job we do a lot is documenting processes that are happening within projects and also putting these somewhere to archive them. So we often maintain GitHub repositories so that everyone has access to these really fun foundational documents that a project needs to go forward. Um, we also do work around uh, facilitating stakeholder engagement and collaboration. So we would work with the RAM team to do like stakeholder mapping pieces. And our job would be to start, mm -hmm. think about stakeholder engagement and get that kind of going and collaboration. So we would run co-working events. We would run things like collaboration cafes mm -hmm. that we have uh, obviously in the Turing way, but we also have them in other projects. Um, and then we provide technical support and domain expertise. My particular expertise really, I would say, is in data publishing. So I've spent quite a lot of time in the health program mm -hmm. thinking about how we archive fairly um, health data. So that can be really, really challenging and has to be done in really a bespoke way on all of the projects that we work on. And I also support the researchers to write uh, their research articles and also data papers, which is something we've started writing for all of our um, health projects uh, when we have new data sets. Um, we also want to um, like co-create and really maintain and communicate 
all of our project resources. So this could be done in things like internal communications to a research team. So a lot of the time in uh, the health projects I work on, I really work in more of an internal community um, because the, obviously the, the data is very sensitive. So we have, they're more closed projects to start off with and they kind of open up as we have the results a bit later on. So I focus quite a lot on internal communication. So communicating with the researchers, our resources through things like Slack workspaces, um, through newsletters to summarize where the resources are and make sure they all have the information that they need. And then we really work to amplify and champion the learnings that come out of projects and the achievements. So this is where we're really advertising the, the work of the researchers. So this could be working with the researchers to write blogs uh, around the research articles that have been written. It could be promoting things they're doing on social media and also going to give conference talks like this to promote the projects that we are working with. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of work around what I call translation, which is working with um uh because i often sit at the interface of lots of different uh, stakeholders so i work with the researchers senior leaders policy makers so i do a lot of work around translating the research into sort of lay summaries into non-technical documentation so and reports so that actually our research can be understood by different audiences and that's a i think quite an important part of our job because the research is often very very technical within health research and data science generally so actually we work to translate that into um, outputs that can be understood by anybody and that's all I'm going to say so I'm going to hand back to Anne thanks very much thank you so much Emma and as we kind of now transition into the interactive part of today's workshop um, I really just want to flag that it's so context dependent as someone who is the community manager of the Turing Way project which you shared a little bit uh, more about previously there's so I can barely hear um could oh, you speak up Hello. Yeah, I will keep it as close as possible. Yes, uh, Emma, you are still sharing your screen, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, so just to flag here that there's so much in my own role as community manager of the Turing Way that I can really identify with in um, Emma's descriptions, right, of working with researchers, of communicating, documenting that work, of facilitating spaces for people to be able to connect across difference, of translating between different ways of working or thinking or writing, etc. Um, but it is very context specific, and maybe that's something that maybe as we set the tone for being able to discuss within your groups, um, research infrastructure, what it looks like for you, that it is very context specific and very institution specific. Um, we've had discussions in, in previous workshops along these lines of going, well, you know, I work really closely with the library, our librarians research infrastructure. And the answer to that question is, of course, yes. Um, and that is very specific to the institutions and the context in which you work, though there are overarching you know, links and connections and themes that we can draw out as well. So with that, I'm going to stop talking and in teams of maybe the tables that we're in now, and I'd say perhaps one, one online room here. Um, we'll kind of begin with, of course, introducing yourselves to each other, um, maybe talking a little bit more about the role that you play, the role that you have, both your imagined title, but also your, um, your current title and the work that you do. And we have, um, maybe Emma, if you could go to the next, uh, next slide. We have four questions. Um, one being, you know, if you already hold what's called a, what you would consider to be a formalized research infrastructure role, um, if you could share a little bit more with your group about how your role I can't, began the process of formalization of recognition within your institution, is that still a work in progress? Uh, and maybe collectively document that within your group. Um, we have another question along the lines of career pathways and progression. You know, what does the pathway for progression look like for your role specifically um, in your organization, but also perhaps what it would look like outside of your institution? Um, the third is, uh, you know, within your project teams, within your group, what types of research infrastructure roles do your team members take? So we gave a couple of examples of how a, a RAMO might work with a reg person in the Turing, might work with a community manager in the Turing, might work with um, a data steward or um, a research uh, project manager. 
And maybe if that's even helpful, you could perhaps even sketch out what a connection or a network map of those that collaboration looks like in real time. Um, and then finally, the the last question would be, you know, how do you feel more broadly? Um, if uh, how do you feel more broadly about research infrastructure roles being recognized within your institution, within your university, within the research landscape more broadly? And so maybe just to make it a bit easier, we could maybe go for question one at this table um, to my left. Maybe group two in the back here um, would be question number two. And then maybe in the front here, if we could do question number three, and then online in a room, if we could do question number four. And if it, oh, we have around 20 minutes, so maybe around 15 minutes at this point. Um, and if you've already discussed one, feel free to select another one for your group. Um, but if, it would be great if collectively, using the document that we shared out, maybe you could um, write a little bit more about your own experiences in uh, answering these questions. I think with that. And you didn't say how long everyone's got. Yes, we do have 15, I'd say 15 minutes or so just based on time. Yes, if we could make one. I'll open up the breakout rooms now in the Zoom room. Hi, Anne. We've come back because we thought it was time for us to come back. All right. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You can hear me online. Um, folks, if it's just starting to close up here in the room. Um, there's a lot in engaged discussion. I'm going to walk around the room real quick. So, so this is where I'm really keen to learn more. I feel like a, like a motivational speaker walking up and down the room. Um, okay, so we have five minutes left. Um, I know five minutes isn't enough time to really share everything that you discussed together. I was like overhearing lots of really interesting points because on one table we were talking about like the infrastructure needed within an institution, infrastructure meaning funding, meaning institutional processes, against going against institutional barriers and the way that academic uh, systems work. On a, another side, we were talking about what does it mean to operate within teams? How do we as roles that don't fit in tr traditional research roles like kind of take advantage of what that means to not fit into these traditional systems to be able to um, discuss how to change them. In the back, would love to learn more about your discussion, but it was very engaged discussion. But if anyone from your teams or online wants to share, maybe we could uh, bring the mic around, maybe starting with online, and then we can uh, go to the different tables. Is there anyone wants to volunteer from our online group? Have a share up. I can't see anyone. I, I will go for it then because I know we're limited on time. So we did talk. Um, we went through all of our different kind of roles and we kind of talked about that. But one thing we we because we were focusing on question four, the recognition. So um, we were thinking about um, different types of uh, contracting for different roles. There was a bit of a discussion around that. And then the last thing we were kind of discussing was the differences between working in like a purely research institute that is kind of self-funded with itself away from kind of a university or to the side of a university compared to being in these roles at, at a university. And we kind of came on, I think, the opinion that in a research institute, we are more, uh, we have the luxury to be outside this very rigid system of uh, academia that they have within universities and actually maybe we can work more on these interdisciplinary projects these wider teams that kind of big team science projects because we have the luxury of of being outside of this system a little bit so that's kind of what we were what we were talking about really interesting i feel like that's something that all the groups here could identify with, especially as we've discussed what we've been doing in the training elsewhere. Um, I'm going to pass maybe to this table first, and then we can kind of go in a circle if that's all right. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so we started off talking about the 
types of roles in the project. And I think we kind of came to the conclusion that outside of things like the Turing Way and the SSI, a lot of us are taking on multiple roles because those roles aren't defined and it's the same kind of individual researchers having to do bits of everything. Um, and even the organisations may not think there's a need for that formal research infrastructure because they're so used to everybody just doing bits of everything. Um, and that's why there's just kind of a bit of a lack of recognition on some of these roles. Can you hear okay? Yeah. Um, and then there's also quite a lack of connection between people doing these roles. Um, so, for example, I'm sat in a department by myself and it's quite difficult for me to meet other people doing what I do even within my own university. Um, so it's just more about how to even just connect the people together then we can all kind of advocate better for that research infrastructure. Yes, and maybe we can pass to the team in the back. I know we're just at the end of time here. Let's be a couple um, minutes longer. Hello, yeah, I'll try and be quick then. Uh, so we started off with, we were talking about career progression, um, certainly in uh, organisations that are only just getting to grips with research infrastructure roles. There's not often and a lot of uh, career progression. So we were talking about the fact that um, some uh, some groups, once they are established, uh, offer that career progression because you're hiring from a pool of best practice that whose behaviours uh, allow career progression to arise as emergent behaviour. Um, the uh, we also discussed that um, quite often in order to establish these research infrastructure groups, uh, you're basically trying to build a community. Uh, where people aren't placed in boxes and stuck on individual projects. Um, and sometimes that also then requires a structural change within the organisation in order to accommodate that new research infrastructure paradigm. Um, yeah, hopefully that's captured a bit of what we said. Uh, I shall pass on. Um, we've got quite a diverse group, so we've got um, people that uh, work in the IT department, and that's where the RFP kind of fits in the infrastructure. We've got others, ooh, that's loud, um, others um, from Newcastle here who started from a small team and grown big. Um, we talked about training, being able to train other people in our universities and organisations, also being able to sell our services and um, to industry and train people in industry. Um, we talked about a code community at the university to try and bring people together and um, who do software engineering in research and trying to do that networking. Um, is there anything else others want to add? That wasn't as great to me. But yes, of course. So I'm sorry, this is going to be a shameless plug instead. Um, so I just wanted to say that this session has been really good and I've really enjoyed this. Um, and to the Turing people, it would be great if you could come to the Festival of Hidden Ref on the 21st of September in Bristol uh, and, and um, into the, in a lovely venue in the M Shed, a uh, museum with, which has got lots of cool stuff in it, um, and do this kind of session because the second half of that entire day is going to be about research roles that have been overlooked and unrecognised. And we're, we're we'll be there. Be I'll be in contact, Simon. <laughs> yeah. And we also, we really want you to be at our work now workshop, which is actually going to be in October. So we'll be in contact with you about that. Swaps work for me, Emma. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you so much. We'll definitely be there, um, was going to say. And then I know that we're just a little bit over time, but if you have a minute or so, um, similar to what we'd done previously at our previous workshop, we have a tiny feedback form. I'm going to drop the link here in Zoom, but also add it to the document. Um, just ask a couple of questions, but uh, really just like what the format, any reflections you might have. Um, really thank you for your feedback as it'll help us to improve this workshop. What we're really interested in doing is essentially learning about not only learning about sharing, gosh, sorry, um, how to make sure that what we are incubating at the Turing how that connects to what research infrastructure looks like across institutions. How can we connect these different models to translate between them, but also recognize the different contexts in which people work. Um, 
and we are glad to hear that it might have been helpful for you all, um, that you all got to share a bit more about your experience. And I don't know whether to continue talking about thanking you all for your time while you fill out the minute long feedback form, um, or just really thank you for your time. And thank you to Camilla, um, to Hari, to Emma, uh, to Ale, um, for sharing a bit more about their experiences as well. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you, Anne.